I wanted to do 10Ks every Sunday. Rain, hail or shine, doesn't matter. If I'm sick, whatever it is, I have to wake up and run it every Sunday. A lot of people will put limits on you, but there really is no limit that exists. On the other side of the hardest decision you have to make today is a fucking load of growth. Mm, Asking myself, is it bringing me happiness, which is very temporary and short term, or is it fulfilling? Like, are you doing something to look a certain way or to have impact? I ask myself that all the time. When I post things on Instagram, is this providing value or like, is it just a pointless post? Our whole purpose of Megalon is to show people through discipline, obviously waking up and pushing themselves through the run, yeah. that they are capable, uh, that they can build the confidence that they're capable of more. Back yourself in whatever you're doing because to me, the only thing that is scarier than you know failing trying what you're doing is not doing it. So that together we have clarity, direction, and success way beyond what we ever previously thought possible. Here's your host, Frankie Lee. Welcome back to the Frankie Lee Podcast. Today, guys, we have got a guest that many of you have asked for, and you said to me, Frankie, get more women on the podcast. <laughs> and I'm telling you now, I have done, right, I have done. Let me introduce you to, right, former world aerobic champion, yeah, creator of a movement known internationally now because of because it's in a couple more countries in Australia but mega run Miss Meg Sutherland welcome to the podcast <laughs> that was quite an introduction thank you that's thank right. you for having me yeah that's all right welcome 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 what's 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 the setup like you liking it or it's what? freaking epic it's it's the real deal I'm I'm very impressed. I think you're a little bit shocked when you sat down. And you're just like, <laughs> yeah. Do you know what? Frankie, this is this is professional. Like, this, is, this, yeah. is, this is real deal. Yeah, I haven't done it this high tech before. That's for sure. Yeah, th- this uh, certainly certainly sets it up for the right standard of uh, of of audio and everything else. But I think the best place to start with you is that um, probably a lot of people will have heard of your movement, Mega Run, and everything like that. Obviously, we it's in every city of Australia now. I think it's in New Zealand, it's in Buenos Aires in yes. Brazil. Yep. Like it's 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 really starting to move and, and do great numbers. And I want to go into that movement later on, but a lot of people won't understand that you probably and you'll be honest about this, but you started life as someone who's quite shy, reserved, very educational. How did you go from being that way to to obviously coming out of your shell and finding yourself and, and, mm. and knowing that, you know, you had a bit more of a purpose in life to do something like this? Yeah, that, that's a really good question. I think a lot of people actually don't know that about me before, like, because I only see the person that I am now, which is super hyped and out there. But yeah, naturally, I, I am quite introverted and shy. Well, I, I used to be, obviously. Um, I mean, my mum would say one day it was like I just woke up and was a completely different person. But for me, I think it was having this realisation that, you know, being shy, I think my shyness came down to a lot of caring about what people thought about me. And I, I, I realised that caring about what people think only really limits you and what, what you experience in life. And everything, every thing that you go through in your life is your responsibility and as soon as you stop blaming other people for it and you and you take responsibility for every choice that you make that's when you actually can make change because yeah 100% a lot of people blame to make themselves feel better and i used to do that to make myself feel project better project onto yeah. other people yeah 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 but it doesn't like in the long run it doesn't do any good for you and the sooner that you realize that and you stop blaming people and you take responsibility for your own stuff then you can actually make change in your life do you remember the day though that the kind of pivotal day there must have been like a pivotal day or a pit or like you might have read a book and it started to kick your head into gear you mm. might someone might have had a had a had a word with you and you sh- and your mindset started to shift i know that there isn't a there isn't a day when it goes by where you just change your life in a day i know that because I, I, it's, it's mm. over a series of time but I do remember pivotal points in my life where people have said things or I've read books and I've gone, fuck, I get it. I just get it now. I just get that there's something more for me. Yeah. I think in terms of when I started to take responsibility for my own life, I I don't remember the specific what triggered that, but I do remember just waking up one day and just being like, okay, I'm scared of a lot of things. I'm going to start doing everything that I'm scared of and then I won't be as scared as I was. So like fear is a lack of experience. Like when you're born, 
you're born with two fears. I think one is falling because that's a natural fear and there's one other one. I, I can't so remember. Probably death. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> but I don't know if you know that, like when you're a baby. Yeah, 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 I, I yeah, can't yeah. remember what it is, but if I remember, I'll tell you. Probably abandonment. Yeah, something yeah. like that. Um, but there's two fears and then every other fear you've learned yourself. So then I realized, well, if you've learned your fears, you can obviously unlearn them. So I just started doing everything that freaked me out, like from skydiving to like (laughs) seeing cane toads up close and personal because I don't like cane toads, but like I would just go and catch one just to make myself less scared. That makes me sound like such a weird, (laughs) but at the time, like, it's all about breaking Even patterns, the simple isn't it? things, yeah. like spiders, like they're scary. Like next time you see a spider, don't ask your dad to go and get rid of it. Like just get rid of it yourself. Like if you break down the fear and you be like, okay, what am I actually scared of? This huntsman can't bite me. It's just a bit freaky because I've created that perception of it. So I'm going to not create that perception of it and change it. Do you think though that you've created the perception of it, or do you think that those perceptions are instilled by your family and the, and the, and your upbringing? Well, that's your responsibility too. Yeah. Like you, you're a product of who you're around and not saying that like my parents made me afraid of huntsmen's, but of course, if you, if someone else is scared of that, you, you naturally yeah. take that on. That's what I mean. You, you take on what's in your environment and obviously it's only at a certain age when you become more conscious mm. to this, that you can take control of it. Yeah. And that's probably in your teenage years, your later teenage years when you start to have to take responsibility. But yeah. so many people are going through life that have delayed it, delayed it, delayed it. And they're still in their forties and they're not taking responsibility for themselves. Yes. You know what I'm saying? To take responsibility, of yourself this early in life is is a massive like game changer for you yeah do you know what i'm saying it's it's pretty cool and i think at the start of the year um in terms of i had a big career path which i'm sure we can talk about career path change we can talk about later but one of the biggest things that i realized is that you know a lot of people will put limits on you but there really is no limit that exists so i mean for example like if you said to me, I want to go and be an astronaut, a lot of people would be like, no, you like, that's, a, that's ridiculous. Like you can't do that. It's like, well, why? Like, stop, stop saying, why are you doing that? Or say you can't do that. Just be like, why can't I do that? Like, yeah. Have, you, have you ever seen, um, there's, 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 there was a study done and, the, and it was with ants, right? And you can put an you can put ants on a on a piece of white paper and yeah. you can draw a black line around the ant <laughs> in biro and the ant won't cross the black line really s- yeah because 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 it but it, and and if you keep making the it smaller and smaller and smaller it 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 it, it, it confines it and what that's what that's trying to sh- the, what the metaphor I'm trying to say is that people's people's minds sometimes you have to go over that black line to expand your mindset to expand what you think about and how you think about things yeah but, but a lot of people are constrained by these invisible lines invisible lines and perceptions that they've built around themselves that, mm. aren't, that aren't the truth that, yeah. that, that have no that haven't where did that come from where did it stem from why, why is it there yeah who said that yeah but no one thinks about that. Yeah. Like they don't think, they don't sit there and think, where did this fear come from? Is it accurate? Like by all means, be afraid of, I don't know, getting, I don't even know what you should be afraid of. But there is a lot of things that you can, that are like I'm not stupid in terms of my fear, but there's a lot of things that you just create that are not scary. Like there's no, there's no need for that fear. 100%. And a lot of people's pr- like perceived problems in their life mm. are also created. Yes. Like they, like they, they, they've, they've gone out and, and constructed these problems. I noticed through doing like a lot of breath work and a lot of inside work over the last yeah. year, which you, which you, which you know all about me doing. It's like, fuck, like I've created a lot of drama in my life <laughs> yeah. for, for, for not, for, for no reason. Yeah. Like for no reason, like because, because of things that happened in your childhood, you can, mm. you can bring them right the way through into adulthood and then act upon, like intrinsically act upon things without even knowing why you acted upon the thing that you're acting upon. And then, and then you, you actually separate yourself from wh- where you want to go to because you're yeah. going towards shit that you now don't, now don't want to go to because you're following a pattern that's been instilled in you since you were a child. Yes. But realizing it is the start of where you can change. Yeah. People just don't realize. Yeah. Is there, is there any like books and mm. um, stuff that you've like read into that you've, you've found really helpful for helping you break through this kind of stuff? Mm, definitely. I think one of the biggest books that I, lo- I loved reading was Can't Hurt Me by David Goggins, of course. Like 
that's such a good book to read. But I think the biggest one that changed my life path was Find Your Why by Simon Sinek. Like, yeah, he's yeah. the man. But yeah. reading that book and realizing, like, it helps you figure out what your actual soul purpose is. And it also helped me figure out the purpose of the mega run. But figuring that out and then only choosing to make decisions based on that do you, is... Do you want to know something? What? I've never told anyone this, but... um. I, I, I read Simon Sinek's book and then I did his I did his online course, it cost me like ninety nine hundred dollars. Yeah. The the my why statement yes. which which I created from that is the is the front line to this podcast, helping people break patterns, flip perspectives in their life. Do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Just got right? goosebumps. And it is it it is part of the when I found that why statement mm. and then I attached it to the right medium, which was voice and podcasting and everything like that. That's when things went bang. Do yeah. you know what I mean? Things started to move forward for me, and things started to really move. And the same, and I've just I just had a bit of a fucking realization <laughs> when 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 you said that to me about Mega Run. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Because that is that is some powerful shit. So guys, if you if you're listening right now and that's hit your ears, like. Go and buy that book. Read it's, the book. It's, it's like what twenty five, thirty dollars. Go and buy Simon Sinek's um, "Find Your Why." Read it. Go and get his online course. It will help you structure mm. your why statement. And I, I might even do something. I might even that's even. I might even put my own spin on this in, in, in what I'm doing and create a, a, a bit of a a remit for you guys to follow as well on that because I think that will really help you gain some clarity. But mm. that is some. That has just hit me hard. Yeah. I just, I, yeah, mad. That is mad. <laughs> yeah. How, how, how long ago did you read that book? I read it at the start of the year. So I was already on a journey of like doing everything that scared me and becoming my own person and not caring what people thought about me. And I, I haven't cared about what people think about me for a very long time. We had so many deep chats about that. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, well, I mean, the way that I like to put it, and I think this helped me a lot, is I often act by worst case scenarios if I'm nervous so like worst case scenario what people would find most embarrassing like go into a restaurant get up on the table take all your clothes off and just walk out naked like I've done that before (laughs) oh my gosh what are you serious (laughs) well I mean that is like I guess for some people that would be the worst case scenario but then like when you think about it people will talk about it for like maybe one hour if that, and then it's old news. Like people are so, like we think that everyone cares so much about like ourselves. Like I'm thinking you care about what what I'm doing. I'm like, no, everyone is so invested in themselves. They don't even realize what is going on around. So stop thinking that everyone is so obsessed with what you're doing. Yeah. It's, it's almost like a selfish mindset to care what people think about you. Yeah, because because if you're caring about what others think about you, you limit your opportunity to make change in the world yeah. and to impact the world the way you should be impacting the yeah. world. Like if I if I if I got so invested around whether fucking trees are from Melbourne like my fucking podcast or not, <laughs> then I'm not really I, I'm not really changing the lives and helping the people that I could be helping. No. Do you know what I mean? Because every some people are gonna like you, some people are gonna dislike you, but the, yeah. uh, the, the moment you you kind of free yourself from the judgment of having to worry about the fact of what anyone thinks of you. Mm. You kind of that that just takes a whole different weight off your shoulders, and you can go and embrace life how life's meant to be embraced. Yeah, you can't do that whilst you're thinking about what fucking other people think of you, what your mum thinks about your your decision. Yeah, get this fucking straight in your head right now, guys. Yeah, your mum, your dad, your brother, your sister, your fucking friend Dave. That they can't live your life. No, they can't do it for you. Mm. They can't. They can't embrace. Um, the set that they can't embrace the feelings you get from whatever lights you up. Yeah. They can't embrace that. Only you can embrace that. Only you can experience it. Mm. Which is fucking why you always need to stay true to yourself. Yeah, I actually that that really hits home with me too because I think often when we're thinking about a decision, we get faced with we. I mean, we get choices all day long. But rather than like sitting with ourselves and actually thinking about what we would actually like everyone just picks up the phone or goes and talks to someone else straight away to get their opinion. I'm like, don't do that. Like I stopped doing that. I like, of course, seek advice from the people that are experts in their field by all means. Yeah. But first of all, just have a think about what you would like, like genuinely think about it. Like, okay. If you go to someone and say, what should I do with my life? 
they will give you maybe what they want to do or like do you think that I can go and do my solo skydiving course like you might be like no that's crazy but I know I can do it like they're going to give you whatever they think they're capable of yeah 100 percent. I remember I remember from your journey right you came up to me one day and you were at a point in your life where you were deciding like which clothing brand to sign with yes and there was a lot going on in your world yeah and I and I remember saying to you you already know the answer. Yeah, I remember that too. I said it to you. I, I took you to one side. I said, you already know the answer. There's nothing I need stop to say. Stop asking. Yeah. You don't need to ask. You're not, it's, not, it's not me. It's not yeah. any... Stop asking everyone else. Like, this is you. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, you know. Mm. You already felt it. You've already felt it. Yeah. You're nervous because the commitment to one means you can't commit to the others. Yeah. But you already knew, didn't you? Yeah. Hundred percent. The day you asked me, you fucking. Knew, didn't you? <laughs> I know, <laughs> I know. But and I, I, you just get caught up. You get caught up. Yeah, you just get. Fr- well, I think you get afraid of making the wrong choice. But like, the sooner you can stop being afraid of failing, the the better. Like, fail fast. Like, you want to fail because it teaches you so much about learning what not to do. That's that's a that's a big realization I've had. It's like. You are going to fail. And if you're not failing, you're not going hard enough. Like, yeah. Go and make the mistake fast and learn from it so you can move on. You aren't failing though. Yeah. So it's 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 learning. It's feedback. You need feedback yeah. from the marketplace in order to improve whatever you're doing. Yeah. Uh, the, the fastest way to learn how to be an unbelievable podcaster or unbelievable athlete is to get hit in the face a few times. Like, <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, yes. I didn't, I didn't go on a podcasting course. Yeah, I just started a podcast mm. and I fucking just felt into what felt right and what yeah. didn't feel right. I added more of what felt right. I took away what didn't feel right. And I, yeah. I, and I, I always come back to the point of authenticity around is, mm. it, is it authentic to me? Is it authentic mm. to me? Fuck what other podcasters do. I don't give a fuck about that. Like, is it, does it feel right for me? Same with what you're doing. Mm. And what we, with the movement you've created, it's all about what feels right. And it yeah. obviously works because it's attracting something. Now, 17 other people could try and fucking set up mm. fucking, you know, unbelievable run. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, instead of mega run or whatever, I don't know. But like, it doesn't bang the same because it's not coming from the same place. Mm. If it's not, it's, you know what I'm saying? So people have to really get clear on that. Yeah. It's just whatever's authentic to you is, 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 is the only game in town you have yes. to fucking go to. That's it. And if you're if you're super passionate about it and it's what you're meant to be doing, it never feels like a grind because you know why you're doing it. And like the feeling that you get from it is so fulfilling that that's actually the big thing. Like I started asking myself, is it bringing me happiness, which is very temporary and short term, or is it fulfilling? And and if you ask yourself that in every choice that you're making, is this going to bring me happiness or fulfillment, happiness or fulfillment, and you start to make way more of the fulfilling choices, your life in the long term is going to look a whole lot better. And I mean that in like on the weekend, are you going to, not that I have anything against drinking, but it's not really my scene. Like, if, are you going to go out and get drunk on the weekend and feel happy for that couple of hours while you're out with your friends, but then go back and feel miserable about the fact that you still haven't changed your life, you're still around the same people that don't make you feel good about yourself, just for that three hours of happiness. Whereas in my opinion, you could make the decision to come along to something like Megaron, meet some people that are actually going to encourage you to push to get to your goals and then long term you actually get your goals and you're living a life that you're way more happy with yeah i think a lot of people in regards to the drinking thing i mean i I mean i've never had alcohol but i think a lot of a lot of people if they stop drinking their friends would change yeah that's that's a good thing (laughs) yeah yeah let 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 that land let that fucking land on your ears what i've just said to you if you'd stopped drinking today i think your friends would change i Mm. don't in in fact i don't think about it i know they would Mm. Or like you'd 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 make different friends that are doing different shit that actually lights you up and you'd probably drop off a few that probably weren't supporting your growth mm. and it's just that's just the natural evolution but people 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 go through stages in life mm. of where you have to you in order to find yourself you first have to lose yourself yeah right you've been through it Mm. And I lost myself for, for for many years. When I left the UK and came here, five years, like a wandering soul, wondering what am I here for? What am I doing? Yeah. What's my purpose? I'm sure this isn't it, what I'm doing right now, but I don't know what it is. 
Mm. And then when I started to, obviously I read Simon Zenich's book and I did this and I did that and I started to put these pieces together and then when I went back to UK and I started this podcast and I'm mm. like, boom, now something feels aligned with me. Yeah. But you, in order to find yourself, you have to lose yourself first. And you just have to have a crack. Like, just try. People, like, I didn't know what I wanted to do. I didn't think if you asked me at the start of the year, I was going to be doing a, a run club. P.S. It's not just a run club. I just want to emphasize that. Yeah, it is yeah. definitely a hive club. But, like, I did not think that. And if you ask any of the people, I always like to look at people who are really succeeding in life. If you ask any of them, the one thing they will say is so many people told them that their idea was stupid and that it would never work, but yep. because they believed it, they made it happen. And also how much their friendship circles changed. So and, yep. and it all started just because they believed in it and they just had a crack and they kept on knocking on those doors. They did not give up. Like actually Shoe Dog is a really good book to read too. Yeah, I don't know I've if you've it, read that. Yeah, yeah, I've started reading it. It's it's a good I've not finished it yet, but he just gets faced with so many challenges and then you look at the empire that is Nike or Nike, what everyone or whatever everyone likes to call it. But you look at that and you think this dude just believed in it so hard that it didn't matter what he was faced with. He just kept going after it. And imagine if everyone in this world was doing what they were passionate about, how much happier everyone would be. There wouldn't be as much hate. <laughs> Not at all. The, yeah. ha- the hate would dissipate. Yeah. Because, if, because if you're happy with yourself, there mm. can't be hate. Yeah. There can't, they can't, they can't be any animosity. Yeah. Society wants to keep a little bit of hate. Mm. Because that keeps the status quo. Well, but, it makes them feel better about what they're doing because they're not happy. Yeah, and 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 mm. happiness is a happiness is not something you you don't just open the door one day and find happiness. Mm. Happiness happens, in my opinion, by learning more and more and more about yourself. Yeah, by sitting with yourself, uh, being alone sometimes, by making mm. decisions by yourself that are really fucking hard for you to make. But the more hard decisions you make, the better you get at making hard decisions. Mm. And that is so, so critical because on the other side of the hardest decision you have to make today is a fucking load of growth, Mm. a lot of growth. And you have to be willing to make the hardest decision that you've ever had to make in your life right now. Mm. And if you don't make it, you are just, you're going to have to make another hard decision or more hard decisions down the track anyway. Yeah. Like you never get away from the hard decision. The yeah. hard decision just gets, the can just gets pushed down the road. <laughs> yeah. You just, you just push it That's further and true. further and further away. Yeah. So give us, break break down to, to to everyone listening. Like what what were you doing at the start of the year that was so different uh, in terms mm-hmm. of like alignment to what you're doing now? Yeah. Um, well, I I think I, because when I was at school, I was always very academic and then I was training. So at school, all I did was train academic, train academic. And I think that's why I was a bit shy because I didn't go to any of the social things because I was just so focused on training and studying. And then so when I finished school, I just always thought I would just do something. I loved science and maths, so wasn't very good at English, but I always thought I would just do something in science or like something... I actually thought I'd be a vet, to be fair. Um, and I went and worked in a vet, which is something I would encourage everyone to do. Like if you if you want, if you think you want something, go and dip your toes in and see what it feels like. Like go and actually yes, experience it. Yes, because yeah. it's so different. And had I not gone and worked in a vet. See, that's the thing too. Okay, I'm just going to take a step back because I get too excited. When I left school, I did my Bachelor in Exercise and Nutrition Science because I didn't think I was smart enough to be a vet. And then I actually got accepted into vet. But it's five years of study. So rather than um, going and studying for five years, I took a step back, which I people were like, don't do that. That's silly. Like, just go get straight into your study. I, w- I took a step back, went and worked in reception um, of a vet clinic um, for a year and decided it wasn't for me, which was great because I saved myself Brilliant. four years of study. So it's worth investing in investigating what you don't want to do so that you can find out what you want to do. Like if I could redo things when I left school, whilst like I'm so stoked, I have a degree. That's really, really good. I do think it's a good show of discipline being able to go and do something like that. But I would just say, if there's something you want to do, just go and get amongst it and see if it's actually what you want to do. Like if you want to be a property developer, go and work for a property developer, 
develop a volunteer a year of your time just seeing if you like that or like if you want to learn how to do podcasts go and sit in someone else's watch Frankie do a sitting doing podcasts for a couple of months and see if it's actually what you want to do because otherwise you're going to waste all this time trying to figure out what you want to do and then like investing in degrees and time like time is what matters and then you come out and it's not even what you're passionate about and the reason why I'm so passionate about this is because after I decided I didn't want to do vet I didn't know what else I wanted to do I knew I was passionate about health and fitness and like that's sort of all I knew so I got offered a job very well paying um, at a physio if I studied physio so then I started studying physio last year during COVID and I remember sitting in the classroom and looking at around looking around at all these student physios being and they were so passionate about it I just remember thinking like why are they so passionate about this like this is not what I want to do (laughs) like at all um and then obviously I didn't it wasn't until I read Simon Sinek's book that I thought okay well I definitely don't want to be a physio I still didn't know what I wanted to do and completely honest like my family wanted me to continue my studies because we it was important that we had an academic basis because we were smart people so I thought that's what I was supposed to do something academic um and they encouraged me not to defer my degree but I ended up deferring the degree for a year um and just saying I'm just going to try and have a crack at things while I'm young I might as well fail while I don't have a whole lot of like I don't have kids I don't have like a mortgage to pay um it's the best time it's the, yeah. best, it's the best time that you have to it's go out time. yeah 100 yeah, it's, it's it's try lots of shit yeah fail or learn lots of times yeah and enjoy yourself like whilst you're doing it and you're going to get a lot of life experience doing that yeah that's how that's how you gain the life experience and that's what's priceless you can't no one can give you life experience like you have to go out and do it can't go and learn a degree on it like doesn't and I'm so pro academics like I love academics but it's not for everyone so don't be afraid if you don't feel like it's not for you is that when you went did you go from physio then to being like a one-to-one personal trainer yeah I did PT um just to sort of dip my toes in there see if I liked it I I never thought um you know I've always liked I don't necessarily like social media but I like that well, I think there's a lot on social media now that is not real. And I like that social media gives my, myself the opportunity to give value to people that I know is real. So yeah. I, I like helping people because I know when I help them on Instagram or whatever it is, that what I the advice I give them is legitimate because I do have a degree in it. So any advice that I give, I know will actually help people because I've seen so many people close to me finally be ready to change their lives, like go on weight loss journeys or something like that and then go on and buy something from someone. And this isn't everyone, obviously, but there is a lot of fake stuff on there and go and buy a program off someone and try and do it and it doesn't even work and then they give up. And yes, that's something that they've got to work on, that discipline and that sort of thing. But I'm really passionate about giving people actual valuable help Ex- executable help. yeah like execute help, th- something that actually will help them in it it's not just like it's not for my gain like i actually just really want to see people be the best versions of themselves and that's that's how maker on has started pretty much so when when you came what was it that helped you kick off the idea of having a run club then i know it's not yeah. a run club it is a run club, but it's, it's not a, a run club. club. Yes. Yeah, yeah. What? Well, yeah. All right. Well, you know what I mean. Like, yeah. What? What? What was the? Where? When, when did all that come in? Well, because it se- it seemed it seemed to start, yeah. and then it seemed to go. Whew, yeah. And I was like, <laughs> "What's happening?" Lo- I was looking around like, <laughs> well, "That came out of nowhere." Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, I I I was doing PT at the time, and then I had run. I found. Okay, so I'd run a marathon in 2019 and that was like that was when I was reading David Goggins' book or maybe listening to his podcast. I don't know if he'd written a book by then. I think I was I listened to one of his podcasts. That actually was a big change. It was Rich Roll and um David Goggins and in my head I just thought David Goggins was over 100 kilos and ran 100 miles or 100 Ks or whatever it was for his yeah. first ever run. No excuses, just hard work. And so 
I thought, well, if he's done that, like I can do it. So then I just went and I registered to do the marathon in 2019 off no training. And I just went and did it. I was like, I'm going to run, walk or crawl. Like I'm going to, I'm going to get it done. And so I went and did the marathon. And then I did, um, I just realized that, you know, it obviously takes you to a lot of places. Running always does. It, cl- it clears your head. It, it makes you, because you're alone. It's an individual thing. It just, it makes you think about things. But I realized that doing a marathon is like a once-off discipline. It's obviously really hard, yeah. but it's once-off. It's way harder to do something every single week that is challenging. So I just wanted to get better. I found myself starting to procrastinate a little bit. So I, I decided at the start of last year, well, this year, we're still in this year, yeah. <laughs> almost gone, um, that I wanted to do 10Ks every Sunday, rain, hail or shine, doesn't matter if I'm sick, whatever it is, I have to wake up and run it every Sunday because that was actually when I moved to the Gold Coast, I found it hard to find friends that didn't just want to go out and party every weekend and same with me, I don't drink. So it it is, I found it hard to, you know, I started drinking like I wasn't drinking a lot but I would go out with people and have a drink and I'm like I don't even like drinking I'm not enjoying the conversations that I'm having while I'm out it's not me I'd much rather be going rock climbing and doing things on my weekend so then but people pester you to come out every Saturday night yeah but then if you I realize that if you say sorry I've got to run Sunday morning they just go they just go oh that makes sense no worries it's so weird. <laughs> so, it, so that's why you put it on a Sunday. Yeah. I wonder why you put it on a Sunday. But also everyone said don't put it on a Sunday. No one will come. So, but the perfect, like it, it is on a Sunday because the right people will come. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. I fucking love that. that it's only that, the frothers. It's really hard. Yeah. It's really hard. Mm. Yeah, I like it. Because I remember back in England... Like some of the lads from the boxing gym would run six miles on a Sunday, so six miles is about it is about ten k. Yeah, it's about ten k, and you know, doing that on a Sunday after you've ran probably two or three miles a day a yeah. week, it's like it's on like Donkey Kong. You can't, you couldn't go out on a Saturday night and and stay up till eleven o'clock because yeah. you'd never ever make it on a mm. Sunday. Yeah, it's that discipline, that instilled discipline yeah. that, that set. That 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 is the one percent daily that we're talking about. Yeah, that thirty seven percent at the end of the year improvement that you make mm. is down to what you do on that day. Yeah, I mean, I get up early on a Sunday, and what I'm doing on a Sunday is is the one percent discipline of getting this podcast ready to put out to the yes. world on the, either the Sunday afternoon or the Monday morning, whatever yeah. I decide is more appropriate for mm. that podcast. But it's the one percent thing that I make sure is on a Sunday that I have no to get. No negotiation. No. Nah, yeah. I can't. I can't be out. I, I want to be in bed by latest ten o'clock on a Saturday night. Yeah. Because I because that podcast. Yeah. In the morning. That's that's that lights me up. Yeah. Why the fuck would I stay out later than ten o'clock? Because I'm lit up by this. Yeah. Obviously at Christmas time and stuff like that. Different. Yeah. But I'll. But because I have more time around the other days, I can set things out to to, to so that I don't have to worry about mm. it first thing. But I that's why I do that. Yeah, similar to similar discipline. But I never looked at it like what you did. Yeah, but I realise why I do it. Yeah, hundred percent. Well, in our, I think in our generation particularly, because everything is so instant, no one knows discipline very well, and I feel I feel like there's a lot of things where like you can listen to all these different things where people talk about how to change your life they talk about it a lot but unless you practically do things yeah and you experience it yourself like you can't make change so I wanted to show people like I actually never had an intention to make it into a thing that I shared with other people but I realized that when I was running every Sunday morning it was training my mind like it's practicing training that muscle it's not even like about the running the running is the tool that allows you to build the discipline because I also realized that being disciplined and showing yourself that you're capable of more which is what mega run is about is what builds your confidence our whole purpose of Mega Run is show people through discipline, obviously waking up and pushing themselves through the run, yeah. that they are capable, uh, that they can build the confidence that they're capable of more. And then hopefully when they realize they're capable of more when they run, they will go on and do be, be capable of more in the rest of their life as well. So they're going to go, okay, when I was running on Sunday, I got to 4Ks and I thought I was going to die. So 
Um, but I, I pushed a little bit further. I got to four and a half or five. And then when they get to the end, they're like, wow, I thought I could only do four and I actually did five. So the next time in life, when they doubt themselves in terms of anything, they're like, oh, I, I don't know if I could do that. They're going to be like, well, actually, my mind told me I couldn't run that four, that 5Ks. Yeah. So Because your, yeah. your mind will always quit on you way before your body will. Yes, because it's protecting you. Because you, because you, you, you got to understand that ninety five percent of your mind is subconscious. Yeah. So only five percent is conscious. Your subconscious will will have things from the past, like we've discussed previously, mm. that will hold you back and weigh you down if you allow it to act in its prehistoric setting. Yeah. But that setting that is set twenty years ago isn't your reality that you're living today. No. So if you choose to go back and let it let it set it as your reality of the day, you've just been beaten by yourself. Mm. That is some fucking powerful shit. <laughs> yeah. I'm telling you. Yeah. It's fucking, it's fucking wild because we, we're all guilty of it. Yeah. hundred percent. So just l- what you're saying and losing yourself in that run, like running, running, boxing, um, is a meditation. Yeah. It, I think what it, what, Essentially, what it does is it allows your mind to fall in, you, because you're 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 in the thought you're in the pursuit of something when you're running. Mm. So you're running down the road, and your mind go. It allows your mind to figure shit out. Mm. Does that make sense? Yeah, you fig- <laughs> you're you, telling me. Yeah, but no, because <laughs> I, I've I ran for ran for a lot of years. Yeah, like nearly every day, mm-hmm. right? And I'm telling you, like for me, it allowed me. I think. I think now it's just it's just lo- lodged with me. I need to yeah. start running again because yeah. Well, you know where it's at <laughs> <laughs> because because I, re- I reckon I reckon that's 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 that was my struggle in the first five years. Mm. I didn't have that that meditative meditative state in terms of like from exercise that yeah. allowed me to free the mind. But most people don't. That yeah. that mind muscle is weak in most people because yeah. everything is so easy. Everything is easy these days. Like no one. And you don't like it's not going to get you anywhere long term, but like all the all the feel good momentary things are easy and available to today's society. Yeah, it's I just know. how it is. So the reason why I say, you know, I'm really passionate about Mega Run not being like this elite running club. It's nothing like that. It's it's for everyone. It's showing people that, you know, runners get head noise too. Everyone gets head noise. It's just the runners have learned how like really good runners obviously have learned how to control their heads better they've got a really strong mind muscle and people can build that it's just like muscles in the gym you can build that mental toughness so that you are stronger and then you'll be stronger in the rest of your life as well so we want people who you know have never run before ever to come to mega run because I guarantee you you'll run and then you'll show yourself that you can run and then you're going to show yourself that you can do more in every aspect of your life. Yeah, it's so powerful, so powerful. And you've so give us a trajectory of the build up with this, right? So mm. you so you start going running on your own every Sunday. Yeah. Do your ten k's. Yeah. Then someone says to you, "Hey Meg, can I come with you? Is that is is that literally <laughs> start? Um, yeah, yeah. It was um, someone really close to me actually asked to come for a run. And they were the person that um, told me to read um, the book because they were reading that at the same time. Simon Sinek's Find Your Why. Yeah. Because I told them why I was doing the, the Sunday runs. I told them that like I didn't like drinking. I wanted an excuse not to go out on a Saturday night. I wanted to challenge myself every week because, you know, you can choose to make change, but unless you're doing it every week, it does, it never, like people make the decision to change, but they just wears off and they don't yeah. actually do it. Um and then they were like, Gold Coast needs this. Like, people in the Gold Coast need it. I mean, okay, why do people go out on the weekend? Most of the time, it's to be social. Everyone on the weekend wants to tick the social book box to be like, yep, yeah. I'm social. It, it's what, I mean, we're humans. Like, we want interaction. We want connection. Yeah. We want connection. We want depth. Yeah, but, I mean, there's no, there's no depth really at it. I don't know if you should say that, but like the Coogee Pavilion, like not really. I haven't had the best conversations when I've been out there. No offense, Coogee Pavilion, it's nothing like that. But I mean, like I haven't had the best conversations when I have been out like that. Yeah, you don't, you don't, you don't, because a lot of people that, um, 
go out at certain times of night yeah are, are, are at the point where they're they're potentially at certain points in time trying to get away from things they're trying to numb themselves to other stuff so, yeah so it's surface level it's so it can be very surface level it could be very transactional at certain points in the evening as well with other stuff like it's like and people go and lose themselves with drugs and everything yeah. else to try and mask other shit that's going on in their life mm. it's important that you identify with when you when you're doing that and you're doing it on a regular basis mm. then there's then there's something you need to face mm. and you always face that by doing the inside work yeah it's always inside work mm-hmm. there's no other answer yeah it's just inside work mm. so, so, so it's, it's fucking simple really yeah but, but not but everyone everyone that's ignores a hard it. choice yeah the hard it's choice a long one um but yeah then then i think we we went for a run told him about it they said the gold coast needs this there's nothing social like there would be people that want to do this because I was finding it hard to meet like-minded people and have good friendships and um you know he just encouraged me he's like if you're really passionate about it like you should you should just do it it, and then so decided to do it I'm like put it on my Instagram I'm like everyone come to this run like we're gonna do I called it 10k Sunday if you want to come come do 10k Sunday I had a couple of friends who had previously joined me as well and they were getting really excited about it and then um the very first one that I decided to do Bearing in mind, everyone had told me Sunday, such a bad idea. Don't do it. No one will come. First time I do it, no one comes because it pours rain, like it pelted rain. So it's just me and this one other person there who we just decided, okay, well, we'll just go for a run, like in the rain, pelting rain, went for a run. Um, And I, I was like, oh, that was stupid. Like no one came, you know, almost didn't do it. And then they were like, no, try three times. And then if it still doesn't work, leave it or try something different if yeah. you're really passionate about it, but change your, change your, change your angle. direction. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then decided to, um, showed up the next week, probably 10 people were there, like some randoms, some friends. Um, in fact, some of the people that came still come now, like have come this whole year. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. yeah it's, beautiful. it's pretty cool. And like seeing how much they've grown is, is really special. She, the girl, one the girl I'm thinking of, she's an OG. She got our um, m- what what is it? Most disciplined mega runner of the year because we did a big awards thing at yeah, the mega nice, mega run. Yeah. Um, but seeing her growth is ridiculous because she's gotten like when people the people that show up on the Sundays are those people that if you tell them oh, I'm gonna I would really love to be an astronaut, they're not going to say that's stupid. They're going to say okay, like how are we going to get a deal on the next best space suit? Like that's the kind of people that come. Like, they're never going to tell you your ideas or dreams are stupid. They're just going to help you try to get to facilitate, them. Facilitate. Yeah. Facilitate your growth rather than try and shoot you down. Yeah. And then um, the following week, it pelted rain again. But this time, there was about 15 or 20 people. And then I just realized, like, how much people needed it. People, people were messaging me being like, this is the best thing I've ever done. Like, I feel so jacked. Like you leave a Sunday just absolutely buzzing because everyone that you've met there has an incredible story. Everyone is stoked to be up and getting after it on a Sunday. And then you have the most productive day and then the most productive week as a result. And then in terms of the other locations, people just, um, I had people asking if they could start their own ones or like, can you please bring Mega Run to Brisbane and that sort of thing? And that's pretty much how it happened. Yeah, because you took you took it from like ten, fifteen people to hundreds of people on the <laughs> yeah. Gold Coast, didn't you? Yeah. And then and then there's even a run club. I see I see Jade Spooner on yes. Instagram. She was at she was at your Mega Run club. In Sydney, yeah. Yeah, on Sydney in Sydney. And then Brisbane's got one and Perth's got one. You said you said to me earlier before the podcast there's one in Buenos Aires. Yes. How many people are going to the run club in Buenos Aires? Oh, I think they have about 15 regular runners at this stage. It's definitely like a lot of them are still in the growth phase. Um, and that's something, it's been a learning curve for me. Learning. To grow communities. Yeah. Because yeah. growing, how, how is it growing a community yeah. in a country you've probably never visited? <laughs> it's challenging. I'm lucky that she's a translator, so she can speak both languages. But I mean, I've been having meetings with all sorts of countries too. So I've had Czech Republic where I've had a full on translator on the calls when I've been meeting with them. It's like mind blowing. I've had like Czech Republic, there's New Zealand has Christchurch, Queenstown, Wellington's already launched and Auckland. They're all people that I'm speaking to about hosting runs there so how is it working and are you just do you just do you just um 
facilitate the pro like the programming, give them give them the, give them the branding, and then let them run their own run club? Or how is it working for you? Um, I think I think the best way to do it is I I am cautious about who I pick to lead the locations because yeah. if you get the right people in the right locations, the locations always work. Yeah, it's just about the right person because the concept the the running is there it it works um you know the community aspect the fact that it's on a sunday all of that is written into manuals um like i've written everything up on how so I, you've got sops on everything what's an sop <laughs> systems and processes yeah. systems. okay go <laughs> like a sop um i just haven't heard it called that sorry guys no. um but yes i do have I do have systems and processes. I didn't initially, but I because I didn't have the intention for it to be something like this, and yeah, yeah, I just yeah. didn't realize how many people need it. I'm just buzzed that you've got them. Yeah. Do you know what I mean, I don't care. I don't care if you know if you know the abbreviation or not. That's not the yeah. point. The fact most businesses don't have systems of, systems of yeah. processes in place. Do you know what I mean? Like they don't have that structure, and if you don't have that structure, you can't scale. Mm. So you, 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 how long? How, this I'm fucking hyped. <laughs> how long yeah. have you? How long into it did you start putting those systems in place? Oh, probably, <clears throat> probably only about like two months ago. I started r- writing them. So probably when did I start? I, I didn't start making Mega on a thing until March. So probably a couple of months. But I'm I'm really lucky. I've I've got someone very close to me that has helped me a lot. So someone mentored you and got you to yeah. got you to think about this. So yeah. putting into a process, then when you got a process you can you can launch new locations. Yeah. So in 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 your mind now for the next twelve months. Yes. How many locations are you gonna launch around the world? Hmm. Well, I mean I, I plan on making it huge, like global very fast be, but because I have those processes but it's more important to me that I make sure the right people are 100%. running the right locations I mean I would love to be like tomorrow we're going to have a h- hundreds because I, I like the feeling that you get the mega feeling that you get from these runs is just next level and because I'm so passionate about everyone realizing that they are capable of more I'm like I just want everyone to experience it right now yeah, but yeah, yeah. It, I've learned the hard way that it is so important that the right people are of running the locations, yeah, hundred hundred percent, right people on the bus. But it, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm, I want you a number. I want a down. number. I want a number. I want a oh. number. I want, a number. I want an audacious, uh, not just a shit number either, like an audacious number. Like if, like, what's what's your number for next year? Hmm. Audacious, make it audacious. Audacious. Well, I have about. There's probably about twenty at the moment, and I I probably am talking to about another seven right now. So. Maybe by next year, end of next year. Oh, by end of next year, I reckon a hundred. Double it. Double it. Two hundred. You, yeah, you, you're downplaying it. 200, <laughs> okay. Two hundred. Yeah, you've got the systems in place. Yeah. And you're you're selling yourself short. Okay. So two hundred. So two. We'll have to do another podcast at the end of the year. Hundred percent. I'll I will I'll make sure sh- I'll make sh- I'll be checking in on you, making sure you yeah. deliver that. But like two hundred. The reason I say two hundred is because. You should always double whatever you think you can do. Okay, I mean, and I it, think I'm f- fairly capable, so that's that is very ambitious. whatever. Whatever your first answer is to a question, double it, double it, double okay. it. So, because at the end of the day, you think about it. You launch in the UK tomorrow, right? If you did, you got Liverpool, you got London, you got Luton, yeah. you got Cambridge, you got Peterborough. You got. I am talking to someone in London at the moment. Exactly. Yeah. Once you get, once you get, a f- there's in London. There's not. You're not just going to have one location in London. Yeah. There's 20, 30 locations for Mega Run mm, in, London, in London, right? More, yeah. 40. So it's not, so you see, you see how my thinking is? Mm. Like in terms of like, you put it, you put it in the big cities in these other countries, right? Blow it up. Mm. Get one working real well in every city, which I'm sure you're going to do. And it's like Sydney can accommodate two or three. Yeah. Like London could could accommodate 20. Yeah. You, and and then you hit the big cities. You're 200 and, and all that audacious anymore, is it? No. Do you yeah. see what I'm saying? Like yeah. P- Think hu- big, 100%. Hu- humans, 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 even without knowing it, we, we kind of, you've already done 20. Like 200 is, is only a 10 from here. Mm-hmm. 10x. That's yeah. Fuck all. Like you've got, like you got. You're not, I'm <laughs> so not, you I'm are not, getting I'm, jacked. I'm not. Let's I'm, go. I, I'm not doing a Grant Cardone on you, but what yeah. I am saying is like a hundred is shooting it short. Yeah. Okay. Because you've got the systems in place. Yeah. If you didn't have the systems, I wouldn't say. But like you now, I know you've got the systems. I'm like right. 
go. Yeah. Go well, the, the the systems things came came from watching um, the McDonald's documentary. Oh, that That's is so the, good too. Do you know what the the, the you're on about the film? Yeah. The fucking film is I yeah. fucking love that film. It's, it's the so it's great. one of the best films you could ever watch. Yeah. That is. Tell me your experience of first watching that film. Like, <laughs> well, the person that has been helping me w- was the one that showed me the film, but I think it's it's when you when you watch it, it's like why is McDonald's so successful? It's I mean, yes, to a point, it is the product, but it's the systems, like everything down to the point of how much sauce is put on is systemized, and that's why if everything is uniform across the board in every location that's when you have success because you're always delivering that same message, that same experience and it applies yeah. to everything. You've got to rem- remove as many variables yeah. and as m- you don't, you don't want to leave anything open to interpretation when you're talking about brand. Yeah. When you're talking about brand, everything has to be stipulated. It's like all my branding colors are the same. You know, all, all my podcast, podcast clips have a certain type of way that they look and feel yeah. and, Isaac handles that and it's it's just done right. Do you know what mm. I mean? He knows, he understands what the ethos, he understands what we're trying to hit and yeah. it, and it, and there's a there's a scheme, there's an understanding around that. Mm. Um all brand I have a I don't know if you have this yet, but you probably want to put this in place is um like a branding guide. Yeah. That says all your color schemes, all your layouts, all mm-hmm. your fonts you use, everything all yeah. laid out in a brand guide so that if you want to send if you take on a marketing agency tomorrow to market you into another hundred locations, you want to take on and be able to go, right, this is this is my colours, this is my mm. fonts, this is my this is my schemes, yeah. this is how we lay out, this is how we do this. Mm. It's all in there. That is what you're doing. Mm. That is fucking brilliant. But the best thing that McDonald was doing that no one really understood at the time was he was you he was franchising locations with the system that he created around creating yes. McDonald's and burgers and all this stuff and all this fast food. Mm. He was franchising it, but he was using the franchise money to buy the real estate that the franchise sold. Yeah, that is so smart. And now McDonald's is one of the biggest real estate owners in the world and not just any old real estate. I'm talking about prime. fucking prime locations yeah. that they own the real estate to. So switched on. And it is, it, it is, if you guys get a chance, in fact, it should be a fucking stipulation. Yes. In fact, you should watch it at four years old in school and you should watch it every year <laughs> yeah. at school because that teach that teaches you more about business than anyf- anything you'll ever watch. Yeah. Anything because it's just so, so fucking unbelievable. It's great. Let's talk about Gymshark. Yes. Right. I was, I was, uh, I was in a conversation with you, obviously, as we talked about in the previous, in the podcast, where you, where you come up to me and you said, look, I've had this offer, I've had this offer, this offer. what do I do? It's just, they're all uh, unbelievable offers. And I said, yeah. you follow yourself. You you already know the answer. You went home. Mm. You come back to me a few days later. You said, Frankie, I've made a decision. Boom, boom, boom. This is happening. I'm like, wicked. Mm-hmm. Talk to me about how you felt about signing Jim Shell. Is, is it something you kind of manifested? Like, kind of thing? Is <laughs> yeah. it like... Um, that's actually a really good question because to, like I have I've done collaborations with, with a few brands before I collaborated with Gymshark and I'm someone who is extremely selective about what brands I align with like I don't do short-term brand partnerships I'm genuinely not interested in promoting something it couldn't you couldn't offer me enough money to promote something that I didn't believe in like I, yeah, I just yeah, won't yeah. do it it doesn't matter what you offer me so when I I was in a brand partnership previously where I realized that I just didn't align. Like it was great product and it was great money, but I didn't align with the brand itself. Yeah. And so when I was making this decision, that was probably the forefront of my mind. Like everyone, the, the product is obviously important. I won't promote a product that I don't love. And yes, finances are of course important as well. But unless you are aligning with that brand, like there's no point even looking into the other stuff. So when, when Jim Shark, when actually, when I stopped working with that previous brand, it, it was, a, it was actually quite upsetting when I, I was not working with them anymore. It, it, ups, it upset me a little bit. Yeah. And then, so I just, this same person told me, well, what like what would be your big dream brand to work with? And Gymshark was the first one. I made a joke about it. I was like, oh my gosh, I'd just be so sick if I went and work with Gymshark as a result of this. And it's so weird. Like that actually happened. 
like and I thought in my head I'm like do you remember do you remember remember me calling them out on your posts yeah I do remember that was great (laughs) but little you know I I I was already in contact with them but I I didn't didn't, tell anyone I I don't I don't know whether I knew that or didn't know that at the time but I we're just egging egging them on (laughs) every every time you posted something I would tag Noel Mac and I would tag the marketing, yes. the marketing girl. I can't remember her name. Yeah, I tag her and I tag Jim Shark and I say, "What are you doing? Like, send the contract." Yeah, like, do you know what I mean? Like, because so good. Just, just because, because I, 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 I kind of knew at that point that it was your dream to be with with them. Yeah. How have they been as a? How have they been and how was the deal set out for you? Is it like a? Is it like a multi year deal or how does? It, is it month to month or how does it work? How, what's the breakdown of that kind of thing? Obviously not the financials, no one <laughs> <the> financials, <laughs> yeah. but like the, what's the breakdown of the setting so that other people can understand how these deals break down so they can set them up for themselves? Well, um, initially, normally I think most brands like you to be on a trial period, but for me, I felt like I was at a I was at a stage where I, I just didn't want to do a trial period. I knew I liked the brand knew I wanted to work with them long term and they agreed that they wanted to work with me long term. So we went straight into a year deal yeah. um, and then I had written in a review within six months because of the experience that I'd had with previous brands. So if I'm going to work with anyone, I'm going to go really hard for them. So um, yeah, I was locked in for a, a year, am locked in for a year um, and I'm just coming up to my six month review now. Yeah. And what, what kind of things do brands like Gymshark offer someone like yourself? Do they, is it like they offer you um, not obviously not just clothing and payment, but do they, yeah. is, is there any what what are the growth opportunities in terms of mm-hmm. like the way that they expose you to to the world? Yeah, well, being a part of a brand like Gymshark, I mean, one of the things that stood out for me was their their whole um, what's the word ethos is be a visionary, yeah. which is so sick. Like I love that. So that was a big push point for me. But I think when working with them, I've never worked. I feel like because they are so big, they're just mammoth that I don't know, like they're so big, but they have managed to be so personal. Like when, when it was my birthday, I got a present, which was a camera um, because they knew I wanted to start a YouTube and it was like Meg, a handwritten note, like, yeah. we're so stoked Just to have thoughtful. you part of the team yeah thoughtful. like a huge brand but so personal and so thoughtful like it's it's seriously impressive and um i've all, i've always loved to be honest i have always loved the way like that noel and ben have moved that brand yeah. like in the way that they communicate and the way that that's translated through the marketing team as well. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And it, it is it is phenomenal the way that they do communicate. Yeah. I I'll, I'll watch I I'll watch Ben's YouTube videos and that is yeah. is it and is it is inspiring stuff. How can you not be inspired by someone who's gone from um, printing their own sewing t-shirts his and own sewing, stuff. sewing you know and his mum fin- how can you from from pizza delivery boy to fucking yeah. multi billion dollar brand. Like, because he was doing what he was passionate about. Yeah. And he's never lost sight of that. I think like he knew his why. He knew why he wanted to do it and he's never strayed. Like their brand is so authentic. Yeah, no, I agree. Is there any plans for you to go to the UK? Oh, I mean, I'd love to go to the UK. <laughs> I have no idea at this stage. But that is one of the biggest things is you get connected to a lot of incredible athletes. Yeah. Like Gymshark signs incredible people. Yeah. And, and so obviously being a part of it, you meet so many sick people through it that's probably the biggest thing and the travel when the travel comes back online for you the yeah. travel and the, and the opportunities that you get will allow you to launch road clubs in other locations so it should yeah. natu- naturally align yeah definitely uh yeah I'm, I'm very i'm very much looking forward to traveling yeah is it is is this is this it for you now in terms of partnership deals or is there anything else that you're planning on doing um no, I definitely am always open to work with other or partner with other brands. And in fact, since Megaron, I have been <laughs> quite frankly bombarded by brands that want to get involved because I think on social media, I'm sure you would know there's been a big shift from, you know, just paying people to promote things to yeah. everyone cluing on that they're just being paid and not actually listening to their advice anymore. So yeah. the, there's been a shift from paying these huge influencers to picking people like to communities like go to the people who are actually involved in the communities that authentically want to help and people are looking to them for the advice I mean when I don't go like if I want to know advice on a product I'm not going to go on uh, like look on an influencer's 
profile, I'm probably going to go and ask someone that I know personally that yeah, is what's your what's your yeah. what's your experience? What's your feeling into this? Do yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah, which is really cool because it's given a lot of people with quality like a good shot. Yeah, and I think when you do have a product online now and it is more boutique and that and it has more feeling, like you say, like the personal notes, mm. the personal gifts, the, the way that you package it and everything like that comes into it as well. Yeah. Like you, it's not just, I, I, I suppose women buy more stuff online than men these days, mm. especially off like places like Instagram potentially. Yeah. So I don't suppose many women are just going and buying things blind anymore. Like mm. in terms of products and dresses, they want they want dresses and they want things from certain places. They want mm. run they want running clothes from certain places. They're not yeah. they're not just going blind. They're going to ask their friend, aren't they? Yeah. Do you know this good concealer or do you know this good? Yeah. Um, you know, skincare, moisture yeah, skincare. Yeah. You're not just gonna, you're not just going to go to women. Women are going to recommend brands to each other, and that's how yeah. that's how the communities grow. And that's well, because why. they know that whoever's promoting it is just it's probably whoever's paying the most. It's not necessarily mm. authentic. There's a lot. There's a lot of influencers out there that are still that they're, they're tarnishing themselves by constantly working with 52 different bikini brands a year. Mm. Do you know what I mean? It's like I was watching one girl on Instagram like, and she's always doing these different bikini brands, and I'm like, I was just thought I sat there and I thought to myself, hang on a minute, how? If I was a woman, I would be so confused right now <laughs> because I don't know. I don't know who you are and what you yeah. represent. I wouldn't know. I wouldn't know whether I was buying fucking Frankie's bikinis or whether mm. I was buying fucking some boohoo fucking whatever the fuck you're talking about yeah. bikini. Yeah. Because I'm 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 I have no idea mm. where your loyalties lie. Yeah. And what you actually like. Yeah. Because you wear so much shit. But you can you can do that. I would just more so say like if I'm going to trial, I've I, I've openly said on my Instagram I'm trialing heaps of supplement brands to I'm try and tell find you the right one. one. I like. Yeah. Like yeah. I'll trial everything, but. If I say this is my favorite, I'm not going to say this is my favorite multiple times. I will say it once. Yeah, no, I like that. I like that. Mm. So, you, so, so you're going to introduce a supplement brand, and then you're going to introduce other brands that potentially al- align with yeah. your business. But you've got your own clothing as well. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> yeah, you got, yeah, I got some socks, and I mean the bands are probably the they, they don't cost anything. You can only get the bands if you come to the run. But that's that. Honestly, the band is the my favorite thing. Because you, you look down at your wrist and it just says, for those of you who can't see, can they see? Yeah, they can see it okay, on YouTube. Can on see. YouTube yeah. Well, if you can't, it just says Megaron, but it has the slogan, you are capable of more. And that is, yeah. that is. I mean, Megaron is what I'm passionate about right now. I, I, I'm, I definitely am appreciative of the partnerships that are available, but I'm passionate about Megaron. Yeah, no, I think, I think you're going to blow it up. I think you're going to do some <laughs> ma- massive <laughs> Thank stuff. Thank you. Get, if you were going to give like people like five five books, right? Yeah, I know we t- we talked about a couple of them, but if you're going to give them five must read books this next year to mm. take their mindset to a next level, what yeah. would you give them? Um, I would give them Find Your Why, obviously. Yeah, Can't Hurt Me is very good by David Goggins. Um, I've got good ones. Let me just think. In the Infinite Game, have you read that? A Simon Sinek too, isn't it? Yeah, that's that's a I can't, I think it's Simon Sinek. That's a really good book, The Infinite Game. Um, Shoe Dog, very good. And then probably Skip the Line. Have you heard of Skip the Line? Ah, tell me about this. Skip the Line is like uh, if you're starting to do something, um, you know they say like to master any skill, it takes ten thousand hours. Yeah, that's technically what it takes. This is about. Go and get into the top faster. So it's like, how do you skip out those ten thousand hours? It has a lot of good lessons. Like, even if you're, um, actually, Gary V's new book's very good too. But I've got, I've got, I've got, I've got twelve. Copies. I'm gonna give, I'm gonna give, I'm gonna give away some of those copies to the listeners. Yes, yeah. Because I bought, I bought twelve copies. You should say the title because that's a good one. Um, it's like uh, the twelve uh, the, emotional the, 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 ingredients the, the, towards tw- no, twelve and success. a half, twelve and a half. Yeah, twelve. It's called twelve and a half. Twelve and a half emotional. And it's the it's the emotional agree, the emotional ingredients that you need for you business know, for success. business success, yep. uh, business and life success. Yeah, yep. and it's all about like empathy, ambition, yeah, uh, courage, and he just breaks down these different 
uh, ingredients within 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 you that you need, yes, and what they actually mean in like business terminologies, and then and then he gives you practical, um, real life situations on how these can be applied. Mm. And Those just, six are good. Yeah, yeah, and 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 that book actually, and I'll give I'll give you guys a few copies. I'll do a giveaway on Instagram something like that, and you know, put out ten copies because I got I got ten copies because of. Because he he, he, said, he had this thing where he's like support me buy twelve books I'll send yeah. I'll send you this like mm. limited edition NFT I thought well the NFT is going to be worth more than three hundred dollars I'm going to pay for the books yes. so I'll just give the books to the listeners do you know what I mean yeah. so I already had this plan in my head so yeah we'll do that we'll do a giveaway we'll actually yeah. do we'll, I, t- I tell you what if I if I remember to do it on the back of this podcast I'll yes. do it on the back of your podcast I'll give I'll give away the books on the back of this that's great yeah and Good I'll, idea. I'll, I'll we'll we'll advertise the books to your audience as well so they can they get a chance to get them as well sick and then I'll just mail them out because yeah. as you mentioned it like I I I got literally got twelve of them so yeah sweet as I, I I'd love to say to everyone um, especially with find your why if you read the book I'd encourage everyone to think about someone that needs to read that book. I want to start this book movement and write, someone did this for me, write a message to that person and what you learnt from the book and what you hope they learn and give it to them and then they can read it and once they've learnt it, they do the same and pass on to someone else. Yeah, when I, when I, when I read, um, when I read like the, the, the actual, the content of Gary Vee's books, not the, pra- I haven't read the practical examples of, of application because yeah. I, un- I, un- I already, to be totally honest, I already understand the application of the ingredients. Yeah. I read the ingredients, which is half the book. Yeah. Um, when I read that, I thought, oh, my mate Lloyd could do with this. Mm. So I, I, I got a book and I wrote to Lloyd and I wrote a message in, in this book. It's so a, good. I wrote it and I told him what this book and I said, we'll always remember this and, and I give it to him. Because when you, the reason you should always write in the front mm. cover of a book when you give it to someone is because you want that person to read that book. Mm. You not only want them to read it, you want them to feel why you gave them it. Yeah, it's and an and, it, and when you when you put when you put something a personal message into a book, it it, it puts the onus on that person that there must be some point in reading it. Yeah, and that's so important because yeah. so many people have got books on their shelf that are just gathering dust. Mm. And the whole history of time is, and the and the thousands of hours that people have learned in life have all been written down in books. The meditations mm. of of Marcus Aurelius, yeah, like it's in a fucking book. Well, it's, that's in Skip the Line. One of the best ways to learn is from other people's experiences, which you learn through books. I know, it's, and 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 yeah, I just can't understand why why more people don't dedicate you your your goal. Like you could have a goal this year going forward, not, not you personally, but I'm talking about the audience. Could have a goal where you like you either read, you know, you can either break it down in several ways. You can either read one book a month. Yeah. If you've never read one book a month, mm-hmm. break it down. If you've got 200 pages, break it down across 30 days, X amount of pages a day. Mm-hmm. You got, your goal could either be one book a month or 10 pages a day, or it could be one book a week. But you got to have a you set yourself a goal at the start of the year. Because what you're doing is compounding your growth rate mm. automatically because you're educating your mind. You're, you're not if as long as you don't go read. Obviously, you can read Harry Potter and all that stuff if you really want to. Mm. But if you read actual knowledge that can actually be applied in your life mm. in the physical realm that you that we're in right now. So if you want to know more about marketing, yeah, you could read a marketing book. Mm. That marketing book that you paid thirty dollars for and have instilled in your mind over six weeks might yeah. spark an idea that earns you a million dollars, and or, or allows you to sell a million dollars worth of product when you find. So, so for argument's sake, for you, you might read a book like by Sabri Subi called "Sell Like Crazy," and you yeah. might and you might build a funnel to your to your activewear brand, and that might generate half a million dollars. Yeah. That comes from books. That mm. book costs you thirty dollars. The return on investment from reading is astronomical it's ridiculous like you can't you can't well put it this way i'm sat here one of the reasons i'm sat here living my purpose is because i knew i found out my why how did i find out my why i read a book yeah i read a book and i and all this other stuff and everything i found has been coming from the the, the two ways in life that you find things mm. other after you've looked inward are Asking other people's advice, the right people, yeah, yeah, and reading other people's 
lived experiences and and the way and the practical knowledge that they inst- they can instill into mm. you. Fastest way to learn, isn't it? Mm. Just and it's also a discipline. It's another discipline. It's another mm. discipline. I think the ten the ten pages a day discipline is the discipline that will compound the hardest for the most amount of people. Hundred percent. Yeah, I reckon if you, I reckon if you want to change your life, reading and get yourself around better people. What would what would be the other things that you'd implement? Mm, I mean, for those people that don't do it already, I'm a big believer in exercise and food. Good nutrition are the are the best medicines and everything in in your life. If if you're not feeling physically well or you're not feeling mentally well, exercise will change your life, and a healthy diet will change your life as well. Yeah. Exercise, diet, reading. Lots more water. Better people. Like you're a product of your environment. That's why Megaron works. People come, they don't have good friends. They get around good people at the run because it's only really cool people that come on a Sunday morning. And then they start to hang out with those people during the week because they're seeing them every weekend. And then their whole circle changes. And next time when they're doubting themselves, what, like the friends are right there being like, no, you got this, like keep pushing. It's exactly what we do at Megaron. And then you keep pushing because your friends are there for you in your weak times and your friends are different. They're better friends. Have you seen some transform <laughs> transformations in people's like personal business and everything else on the back of that discipline? It's ridiculous, Frankie. Like that is why I'm so passionate about it because it's obviously changed my life. Running changed my life and that's why I'm passionate about it. But there is people that come to this run, like people finish the 10Ks and just burst into tears. But there is a lot of people that have had complete career changes just because running has shown them that they're capable of more and they've had the right people around yes. them to back themselves. Like people have fully changed their careers. Fucking that's some powerful shit. Yeah. Because even even when I think about the messages and the fucking feedback that I get from this and doing what lights me up mm. and the way it changes people and well, their the belief. listeners too yeah, yeah that's what I'm saying that's what that, that's exactly why I do it yeah because it that's another thing when you when you're trying to build community and trying to build purpose and trying to build your why mm. your why in life cannot be about you yeah has to be about something way bigger than you. 100%. Because there's fucking 30 people, 40 people, 50, 60, 70, 100 people a day starting podcasts in Australia. Mm. Yeah. And they never get to episode 10. Yeah. Because the purpose behind it and not doing it for the right reasons. Yeah. I I think that's made it come up in my head. You can never stray from your why. Because if my, like if my focus shifts from rather than getting people to come and run and changing the people's lives that come to it too. I want to see how many, how big I can get these runs. And I f- take my focus off providing the value. You just lost, lost, it. lost the you, whole run. The run you, won't work. You, you, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Mm. Like my only, the reason I've never put ads on the podcast, mm. the reason I've turned down oh, money, so right? Sick, it's because I fucking love it. Right. Mm. I fucking love it. Mm. Do you know what I mean? There's there's no one supporting me. It's all my own cash. It's all me, man. Like I go out and I earn money doing something that doesn't light me up in a lot of respects, but I get to help people. So it lights me up in that way. Yeah. So I help people remove online content. I help people do stuff yeah. and then I get paid and I take that money and I put it into the podcast to give away free value doing something yes. that I love. Right. But imagine if someone paid you and you started talking about things that you didn't love. Well, yeah, it wouldn't happen. Exactly. It wouldn't happen. Like there's, there's, there's been people offered me like fifty Ethereum, promote this NFT, do this, do that. Fuck off. Like, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Do you know how fucking much purpose this gives me? I wouldn't. Ch- I would not give away the purpose I feel by doing something that I love yeah. for any money in the world. When you're on purpose, when you when you're doing things for the right reason, yeah. I just know that that that. All you have to do is turn up and do the reps. The people will understand that you're fucking, you fucking love it. Yeah. They will resonate with it because you love it. The money will come down the track when the yeah. money is, me- when the money is meant to come and when everything's meant to align, it will fucking align. Mm. But you have to serve the world in a fucking big way before that starts to come to you. Mm. It has to be about something bigger than yourself. If it's never about more than what you can earn, you'll always cap yourself. It'll always be about the money. It'll always be about just earning Doing something for something. Mm. 
Well, how's about we just start doing something because it actually fulfills you, actually <laughs> fucking lights you up. Great. Yeah. It fucking does though. It does. Yeah. Like you, you know how much, I know how much your stuff lights you up. That's mm. why, that's why I invited you on here. And you know how much this lights me up because mm. we've talked we've fucking many times about this. Yes. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Along our journeys collectively. Yeah. And I just want to thank you for coming and, and just, just being real and dropping it on here as well. Like if there's one like if you if if you're leaving the planet right now, yeah. If you're leaving the planet, and you just ha- you couldn't leave anything behind, but you just had to leave like the one pearl of wisdom, the the one paragraph or or something you could instill in other humans to take them forward in life. What would it be? Oh God, that's like a big. It's a big thing, but it's you, a big thing. But 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 you, but you're doing big mm, shit. Mm. Um. Okay. Can I do three? You could just let it flow. Okay. This is well, not, this one is thing. Not, don't play the rules game. One thing I would um, say is it's important to ask yourself whether you're doing something to be or to do. Like, are you doing something to look a certain way or to have impact? I ask myself that all the time. When I post things on Instagram, is this providing value or, like, is it just a pointless post? Like, yeah. it's really important. Um the second thing I would probably say is um, back yourself. Like if you don't back yourself, like no one else is going to. And and sometimes it only takes one person to tell you that. But back yourself in whatever you're doing because to me, the only thing that is scarier than, you know, failing trying what you're doing is not doing it. Like imagine getting to the end of your life and being shown the person that you could have been. And just being like, wow, I, I could have lived that life. Like, I don't want to miss out on anything. I'd, I'd, I want to be the person I'm meant to be. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> Giving <laughs> myself <laughs> That's terrible. Um, my last thing, I had something else, but I'd probably just say, you want to change your life, change the people that you're around and have a crack. Yeah. No, that's beautiful, man. That's beautiful. And thank you so much for, for coming on <laughs> Thanks here. Thanks for having me. Thank uh, you. That's all right. But <laughs> guys, do me a favor. Meg, just, just drop your drop your website, drop your Instagram, drop all that stuff now. Yeah. So our, our website for Mega Run is being redone. So I'll just drop the Instagram, but it's at the Mega Run. So T-H-E-M-E-J-G. Jeez Louise. <laughs> M-E-G-A-R-U-N, Mega Run, yeah, the yeah, Mega Run. Yeah. Um, that's probably the best place to find everything. And drop your personal on there as well. Oh, my personal is just Meg Sutherland. So M-E-G-S-U-T-H-E-R-L-A-N-D. Um, just Meg. Yeah, Do you know that? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm a Just Meg. <laughs> <laughs> but guys, like, honestly, I hope you've got loads of value out of this. And I know that a lot of it, a lot of this information will hit your ears at the right time. And mm. I know that there's, there'll be some parts that hit some of you like a steam train and you just got to go away and take some action on it. If it hits you, if you just made, if, if it hit you, if it, if you got what you needed to get out of this today, go and take some action on it. Mm. Do me a solid favor too, right? I don't ask you for a lot, right? And I'm not asking you for a lot. I'm just asking that if you resonate with this, send me a message, send mega message, join her run, join my community, Tell your friends about this podcast. Share it on social. That's all I ask of you. Do you know what I mean? If you, just, if you could do me that solid favor, that would that would mean a hell of a lot to me. And let me know how this goes for you. I hope it hits your ears at the right time. That's Meg Sutherland. That's the Mega Run. Let's go. Let's go. Don't forget to subscribe to the Frankie Lee Podcast.